This is a new sump by Leviathan, the LS25. It's one of the new four filters in our line that have built-in ATOs. This is a special one. The reason being is the refugium is on the right hand side and is fed by a small percentage of the flow going in. It allows the refugium to run almost to the top, 14 inches high, and gives you a lot more volume refugium, especially for a system this size. This is a, a, a short clip of the unit running with a quick walkthrough. This unit comes in red, black, and blue. It includes the plumbing that you see, and the plumbing matches the color of the top. Let's start with the back corner on the left hand side where the input is. If you notice, it allows for two one inch inputs. If you undo the screws, you can actually remove that lid if you have any fish or other reasons to clean that chamber. Most people in a setup would use a true union and a quick disconnect so they can disconnect the pipes from the tank. This allows for the two inputs, either two overflows or one overflow. You don't even need to use both inputs. The input on the right has a valve to send a small amount to the refugium on the other side. Generally we try to get about 10% of the water flow into the refugium on the right side. Before we go on further, just a couple of general specs on the unit. It's 24 by 17 by 15 high. The 17 gives a little volume but can still fit in all stands that are for 18 inch tanks. It's approximately 25 gallons total sump area. It uh, has a 10 liter ATO built in on the front left. An approximately 10 gallon refugium. Which if you subscribe to the 10% rule, this would work for a 100 gallon aquarium. Now back to our walkthrough. The water rises in the silence chamber on the input to 13 inches and overflows on the sock chamber. That would be the middle chamber on the left. Soon I'm going to show you some details of the chamber, some close-ups. But if you remove that lid, you'll see that there's a hole for a 7-inch sock. There's also an adapter ring that allows you to use a 4-inch sock, which is what it's running on now. After going through the sock, the water comes out the side into the front middle chamber. Right now you see a reactor in that chamber. Most people would use a skimmer. That chamber is 8 by 9 inches. And it allows for the majority of smaller skimmers on the market. It has a gate that's adjustable and adjusts the water level between approximately 5 and 11 inches. And it also... If you look down about four inches from the top, just above the water level, is a probe holder for Apex controller. You can't see it from this angle, but the ATO that's on the front left also has a side hole, a square hole near the top, that allows for the wiring and the hosing from a pump to come out through the ATO on the side. One other quick note 
the chamber in the back, since it keeps its water level at 13 inches, is a good place for a, a small heater. Now back to the middle chamber where the skimmer goes. The water goes over the gate through a bubble trap and into a return area. The return area is 6 by 8 inches and right now it's running about a 600 gallon per hour pump. This unit can easily handle from 400 to 1000 gallons per hour. Especially with the fact that you're feeding the refugium area very slowly. Because you're feeding the refugium area very slowly, the water rises and overflows a set of teeth. The water drizzles down the side and makes no noise. The system is very quiet. In the refugium area, in the back corner, there is also four holes for doser. And there's also a holder for the doser pro, uh, right down about four inches from the top. The three one inch bulkheads and the plumbing is included with the valve. This unit will work very well for aquariums from 40 to about 120 gallons an hour. And at least with this setup, when we turn the power off, you only get about an increase of about an inch of water in the return area.